ask me about nuclear ask me about molten salt reactors in my panties and see how things go from there well actually <laughs> uh ken uh, a pair of panties can actually block alpha radiation is that correct a sheet of paper can so but yes panties can so they should use them as a mask so you don't inhale <laughs> off of radiation <laughs> always use your panties as a mask this is the new duck and cover yes <laughs> this is official this is not expert advice because i have to disclaim that now because everyone uh, misunderstood what i was fucking saying on my stream that got me here fired. i'll do a when i edit this i'll do like a flashing uh disclaimer on the screen if I remember, and if I'm not too yeah. lazy. Because remember, I'm not an expert. I've made that clear how many times, guys? I'm not an expert. Um, they, the, the lies in that email were fucking ridiculous, man. Welcome everyone to episode 35 of the Midtown Podcast, your only weekly source for the intro that comes about eight hours after the opening sentence. As always, I'm producer Tim. Joining me today is Drexel, and also joining us is Ken, uh, uh, Ken's Counseling Couch. No, the correct name is Ken's Counseling Couch. <laughs> Ken's Counseling Ken's, Ken's, Couch. Ken's Canceled Couch. We're spelling with all K's now because I don't give a fuck. Damn. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you don't really have a job to lose anymore, so... I mean, no, I don't. Go all out. I, I don't. I also Do you hear that very savagery in the voice? Can before we go any further, can you catch everyone up on what exactly has happened? Go through the timeline. The quick wrap up of this is the Sophie Long case is a custody case uh, involving a nine, now ten, she'll be eleven in September. Uh, so a ten year old girl now, um, who the parents had divorced a, a few years before. There was some. Issues recently, they moved to a different county in Texas. Their case transferred, and then within a couple of weeks of the case transferring to a different county, the dad sent a petition to the court uh, requesting modification of the order because of allegations of sexual abuse. And the allegations that were obtained in the information I had from the court directly uh, were pretty detailed, uh, like specific uh, types of. Uh, injuries, threats made against the child, against her safety, against her life if she told, things like that. So this happened in July of last year. Um, so August rolls around because uh, the, the petition was filed in late July. August, September rolls around. This case hits the national media. Uh, Nick starts covering it. I start paying attention. I spend about 100 bucks getting the documents overnighted back to my house on a CD. Because we were supposed to cover them last year, but we never got around to it because the case got sealed. Uh, so I got the documents requested early, about mid-September, about 14 September, they were put onto a CD. I got them about two, a day or two later. Um, I never really did anything with them except uh, upload them to a, a, a mega link that I kept for myself and I shared with, I think, Nick. But I think that was it. And that's all that really came of it until recently when I was like finding out about Sophie allegedly being kidnapped by her dad. Oh, excuse me. Sophie being allegedly kidnapped by her dad. And so I was like, okay, I want to go back through this case because I never got a chance to go through all these documents. So I was, my goal was, and I actually used um, a program I have that helps you generate timelines for like either storytelling or for legal things to help kind of visualize it a bit better. I was going to go from the beginning of the case to now with the documents I had access to. And I was going to go through them. And we were going to read the allegations. We were going to figure out what the fuck's going on. So I normally, my streaming schedule is going to be changing, but I used to stream on Sundays and Mondays. And I did a stream on Sunday. I normally, if you've ever been on my streams, I have like 10 viewers. I had like 400 subscribers up until this. And so it's not like I had a bunch of people. Uh, so this happens. Uh, I do a stream on Sunday. My view, my view count goes from 10 viewers live to like 40 or 50 in like a matter of a couple minutes. Because someone figured out I was streaming. They thought I had a new document that they alleged was under seal. It was not. 
they alleged the documents I was talking about was under seal. It was not. So I streamed on Sunday talking about some of the stuff. And then I've actually stopped talking about the documents on Sunday to engage with these Karens in chat, right? Uh, because they were asking me questions. They were calling me unethical and all this other stuff. And so that was kind of what happened on Sunday. Monday rolls around. I start to read the one document that kind of kicked everything off. This is the document where the dad's asking to modify the orders and they has the affidavit with the allegations in it. So while I'm reading this, I'm being told I'm sharing uh, information from a sealed court document. Oh, I forgot to, I missed the most important and funny part. Uh, on Sunday, I got an email from the mother's attorney stating uh, it was a cease and desist email that I was uh, apparently in possession of the petition for writ of mandamus, which is a court document filed in July of 2021, which I did not have at the time whenever I received this email. People thought I was going to be talking about that document. I was not. And so the mom's attorney emailed her PR attorney that we now know, uh, emailed me and said, I shouldn't have this document. And I need to delete it if I don't want to have legal exposure for uh, invasion of privacy. Monday, I bring up this document on stream at the beginning, laughing at it because I'm like, I didn't have this document. I wasn't going to talk about it anyway. Uh, people thought that uh, it was wrong of me to make fun of, like, I should just respect the mom's privacy. The mom said to stop talking about this. I shouldn't talk about it. I did anyway because I wasn't, I was technically following the court order. So I start reading this uh, petition and affidavit. Uh, I'm getting into it, and I'm as far as like getting into the affidavit, reading it, um, and I'm reading these allegations of abuse. Not only having dealt with that as my own childhood, childhood, having friends of mine deal with it. Anytime I have to read that, it's always going to be shitty. Anytime I have to talk about it, it's going to be shitty. My heart drops every time I read about it. I get a little bit of tightness in my chest. My voice fluctuates. I mean, it's kind of doing it right now. This whole situation is still very anxiety-inducing for someone who has depression and anxiety, right? These people take that as me getting off to this. I'm sitting here reading the allegations of a nine-year-old girl being sexually abused, and they're sitting there telling me I'm getting off to it, which they kindly shared with my boss when they contacted oh. my employee. Yes, I'm not even joking. I was fucking livid when I got that phone call and I heard that from one of the admin staff that I was reading because they said I was reading in detail. I was talking in detail about a nine-year-old girl's vagina or genitals or something like that. Right. And it, it gets, it gets better. Right. They misconstrued me talking about, cause someone said there's no, there was no physical evidence that she was sexually assaulted. And I, I, and I answered that question and addressed it in, on the stream in anatomical terms. I said, there are ways that a child could be sexually abused where there's no evidence. So I said, for example, if there's digital penetration uh, with the fingers or if there's an object penetration uh, that can change uh, or if it's, say, for example, only oral abuse that can change the level of evidence that you might recover, basically. That's to the basically the extent I went into detail on it. They took that and twisted it is to me talking about like putting things in the kids, with, like talking about, you know, penetrating the kid, like that kind of level of detail shit is the, uh, is the things I'm hearing and they're taking and twisting. It's sick. It's disgusting. Like I've had to hear that. I've had one of my best friends growing up was gang raped when she was around Sophie's age by a couple friends, by several friends. I've got, I can't tell you how many friends and family who've dealt with this shit. I dealt with this shit. You think I'm going to sit here and get off to it on stream? Anyway, so I'm reading it and I get a phone call from a, on, from a block number. It rings. I don't pick it up. Uh, I get another number. I get another phone call from a number. This time it shows. I shared that phone number with a couple people saying, uh, behind the scenes saying, I got this phone number. I don't know who it is. Uh, that phone number got to be turned out, turned out to come from one of the people who 
in their little Facebook group for, for Sophie that they have, that they were in their attempts to get my stream pulled down. Uh, this person who called me and who was also potentially, hint, 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 knock, knock, uh, the person who sent the detailed email uh, that resulted in my termination was part of it. Uh, she was wanting, she was asking people to help flag my video down, help get it taken down. She states that that was just to get the video flagged down, that she didn't have anything to do with my termination uh, or my firing. Um, Drex, we have a word for that. It's called bullshit. Oh, no. It's great how these Karens have lost it on each other. I have seen so many people thrown under the bus in the last week. It's been great. Like, they've tried, like they tried throwing someone under the bus that has had no attachment to, to this situation this week. Right. She got the documents. She was the last person to request the documents to the case before it's, she posted them publicly all last year. There was only one way that tied back to me. It was a phone number that until May of this year, May or June of this year, was privated. That was, it's a Google voice number and it was hidden from public behind a private number that Psychology Today gave me for my, po for my profile. Because I have one of those Psychology Today profiles to help people find me as for therapy. And there was an accident with privacy settings on their end. So my number got public in like May or June that my, my quote unquote work number. So only clients of mine ever or uh, people who have called me through that Psychology Today website after May would have that number. Before then, it was a separate number. So there's no way anyone before May attached it to me. There's just no way. I've tried for pulling that phone number up. That's the only attachment to it. And that's the only time I know that could have happened. So people were trying to throw this chick under the bus just because she did a document request. I talked specifically to this girl and I said, I don't believe you did anything wrong at this point. You just shared documents. You weren't weaponizing the documents. I think that's different personally. Releasing documents versus weaponizing them is a different, different thing in my opinion. So it's about two. I'm sorry, it's almost, it's like four or something in the afternoon in Eastern at this point, uh, four or five. And I get a phone call from my boss saying that she's, she's asking me about these allegations. I had to, you know, I muted the stream and I'm getting this phone call. So I'm freaking out. Uh, so I ended up just terminating my stream at the point and privated my whole channel. Uh, so I privated my whole channel because I was, I knew if I didn't private videos that they would take them out of context. And also send them to my boss. I thought I would have the opportunity to when I met with my boss the next day. Because the, the phone call with my boss happened on Monday. She requested me to sit down for a meeting at 2 o'clock on Tuesday. Uh, I figured I would be able to sit down with her. Uh, explain the situation. Review the video if she'd like. And, you know, all would be kind of fine and dandy for the most part. That is not what happened at all. At 2.47 p.m. last Tuesday, I walked out of that building for the last time. I have more than a dozen clients, more than a couple dozen people whose lives are fucked off now because their therapist got pulled out from underneath of them immediately. I didn't get two weeks to transfer clients or even a week. I met with my boss at 2 o'clock. By 2.30-ish, we, we had effectively been done with the conversation. She told me to clean out my desk. He cut me my last check, gave me a very vague one-line termination letter, and that was it. And I was done. Now, there's a couple of things that your story has, Ken, and I'll focus on this. What was the actual, you know, you said you came in for that meeting, uh, you know, that you scheduled that for that Tuesday. You come in. What was the due process for that? Like, did they actually like, go over to like, were, how much speaking did you do as opposed to her? So I tried to, to speak a decent amount. Um, it just didn't end up resonating. I think every time I would try to, to present an argument, uh, my, cause she said, you know, I kind of want to hear your side of it. Uh, when I first came in, she's like, I kind of want you know, uh, tell me more about what's going on. It's kind of how it started. I was explaining, I was reading the, these documents. And, you know, I explained it was a public case that I, I obtained the documents before they were sealed. 
uh, that, you know, there I'm not, you know, cause then my boss is like, well, the case is sealed. I'm like, I understand that, but I'm not a party to the case. I cannot be held to that. She didn't seem to care. She thought I was still supposed to be held to that standard. I didn't know that rule either in her defense. I, if for that, for this one thing, I didn't know that was a thing either. I thought sealed meant, cause doesn't it also apply to journalists? I've seen people held in contempt of court for like reporting on sealed so cases. So the, the way it works is, is for example, I've had sources provide me documents that may or may not be under seal right now, right? Now, if I don't know, you know, if I'm not a part of obtaining that through illegal means, like if someone just sends me an anonymous email and says, "Here's your information, here's the here's the document," I'm an anonymous source reporting, and you're a journalist and you're acting in a journalistic capacity, like I. I'm good unless I'm part of like the obtainment through illegal means, or I'm aware it's being obtained through illegal means, then that's the problem. If it's not, that's the understanding I have from what I've been talking to Nick. Um, I had Nick who I had talked to in messages before my meeting. I asked him, can you be on standby to call in case I need to have the discussion on legal stuff? He said, yes. You know, I had, I gave him, I gave him my phone number. I, he gave me his, um, to to call so that way, if you know, my boss needed explaining that the cease and desist doesn't apply, that the ceiling doesn't apply. Um, he was there waiting in the wings to talk to, um, because I didn't have the ability to find an attorney that quick. So as far as in state, it you know, but still on a general level, the they all processes work the same. Man, I wonder if we're gonna get served with some paperwork. Uh, you're probably just going to get a, a cease and desist email. So whatever your uh, company email is would probably be the best way to, to get that email. Cause it'd be kind of funny if you got one too. Uh, yeah, it's, it's go at fuck yourself.com. Well, I was actually surprised whenever I set up my jumping ahead, but I was actually surprised when I set up the GoFundMe that I was able to get, um, support Ken.com and that no one had bought that domain yet. Like a very <laughs> common name. And in a very common, like, you know, thing, like, how has support Ken not been taken yet? Like, period. Like, I'm like, I'm holding on but to yet, this motherfucker. Uh, support, uh, support Callum probably is taken. Yeah. Drax, is support... it just me or like, do kids who get leukemia, are they often named Callum? Well, you know, I mean, name changes. I was I changed to Ken's counseling couch after a while because uh, Shanene's counseling couch didn't sound the same, and <laughs> and so I just I don't know it just kind of rolled off the tongue better. Plus I was going to use the three Ks, and then I realized there's a negative connotation with that, so I couldn't do that. So I had to change to the two C. Oh, you and, mean like uh, showing three strikeouts at a baseball game? Oh, like the 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 WP, the OK thing, like how it's the W. And then it's the oh. lowercase p, and then it's oh, the no, white no, it's power. even funnier than that. Um, so this uh, this black woman went to a baseball game. Uh, she got there late, so they had already played, and the pitcher had struck out three batters. And so every nice. time you do a strikeout, it's a backwards K, right? Hmm. So uh, what they'll do up in the stands is they'll unfurl a little banner with a K on it to show how many strikeouts the pitcher has. So she gets into the game and there's three banners with KKK and she's like, oh my God, how could people just be so blatant with their racism? Uh, Wait, I, let me find you an I article on that. Let me, let me find I you the article. Oh, I didn't know you oh, did Well, oh, Ken, here's the question I have about your, your situation. Was there any legitimate investigation on your employer's part or were they just, if it is like, we heard this, this is what we're gonna, you know, basically we heard this that you said or did X, Y, Z. We are against X, Y, Z, allegedly, and then therefore you need to be terminated because it doesn't sound like there was an actual investigation for context, right? So that's where things I think get interesting in a way because, um, how do I put this? So my mom used to be an HR professional. Uh, it's like she was an HR director of a regional area for a billion dollar hotel chain. For many for many years, she did this. She made, uh, she was really good at what she did. She had worked her way up. I was almost a corporate when they pulled some bullshit, and she kind of got screwed out of her corporate position. Um, but so my mom knows what she's talking about when it comes to to HR stuff, 
And so I asked her for her opinion on it. Like, do you know, do you think it was handled properly? Do you think that my boss did the thing she was supposed to? Do you think she fucked up on anything? And she was like kind of taken aback as well with how like the situation went down. Cause it takes a lot of fucking backstory to explain this whole situation. Cause there's so much that you have to understand at a baseline to understand how I got fucked. Right. It's like, okay, so Ken had this happen and then this and then this and then this. Well, then that makes the first part actually make sense just for part one. So it was just so much backstory. But once my mom finally, finally got a good understanding of it, she thought I had been, you know, that my boss had ironically violated her ethics from an HR perspective because our human resources department is the owner who was also my boss. So very small company. So there is no formal HR department. Uh, which can be kind of a, a conflict in some ways for small companies. Um, it's actually an interesting discussion on its own. Also, ironically, my boss, who had made claims that I was violating ethics by talking about uh, this case, I, I told her, you know, at one point, because the conversation jumped all over the place. And I told her at one point, you know, I'm acting in a journalistic capacity. This isn't me in a therapeutic capacity. You know, she's like, you're not a journalist. I'm like, well, everyone's technically a journalist if they want to be. It's like, all you got to do is report on something. Uh, so that was interesting. Um, she told me that because one of our ethical principles is do no harm as a therapist, that because the mom had asked me to stop in the, in the chat, because the mom had apparently jumped into the chat during my stream and said, you know, please stop talking about this. Uh, because the mom had asked me to stop that I was violating violating the ethical principle of do no harm. No, I'm not joking. I'm dead serious on this. Wow. Which to me, makes no sense. How can I be told to do no harm to someone who's not my client, to someone who I've never met, to a person who is states away? Like, I live on the East Coast. This, this is this fucking Texas case, right? Uh, reporting on potential um, abuse allegations and then taking that down is doing harm. Well, no, because I it was I was also doing harm because I was discussing a sealed case that my boss every time. So here's the thing is once things started getting past the initial start where I was trying to explain things and like she started bringing up like the ceiling and the cease and desist. And I was trying to explain the legal, you know, the intricacies of that. Every time I would put up something that would kind of defend myself effectively she would get really pissed off and start yelling or start getting mad and start screaming and oh. saying shit. And, and what, she, so, so Ken, would you say that your boss, uh, wait, wait, uh, hold on, Tim, what, what did we name white women that are German shepherds? Do, do we have a, we have a dog for them, right? Uh, shit, I forgot. Uh, but so, so Ken, here's what ends up happening. St. Bernard's? <laughs> they might've been. Well, here's the thing, Ken, your, your logic and reason right? You're using logic and reason for an argument. So what you're saying is you're female, can't decide that enough, female boss can only respond to logic and reason with emotional outburst, right? So I'll, I'll argue a couple points back because I've been very particular to, to not say anything like really negative about my boss. Uh, I mean, I will without even knowing her. I know, <laughs> you know what happens when you put Rex, women you in charge. Dick, you need to dick her down. You need to go I, handle I her, then go handle it. Susan. I I can't at this point more my own moral reasons. Uh, you know, she did give me a job back when I started because I was in desperate need of one at the time. She took a gamble on me at the time. And here's the thing is up until today, uh, up until that day, I've never had anyone, and I mean anyone, complain about the type of therapy I do, that anything I've done in the therapeutic relationship or in the therapeutic engagement was in, inappropriate. I never had anyone say he's creepy or nothing, not a fucking thing. I have had so, and, and this is going to sound conceited. And you know what? I will own that because one of the things I am fucking proud of is, the, is how good I am at therapy. Is I may not be an expert at this, but I have had fucking good successes. And I have done major life changes for a lot of families. And I will fucking own that because I am proud of that. And that was one of the things that pisses me off the most about what happened. It's because yeah, I have families now who have this. no fucking idea why this happened. And, the, and my boss can't tell them because if she tells them this defamation, so she can't say why she had to, why I'm no longer there. 
I can't continue therapy with them until I find another job. Technically, I have to be under uh, supervision and stuff. I have to be in another practice and stuff for a certain period of time before I can practice on my own. It's part of the licensing requirements. I mean, there's a whole bunch of shit that goes with this. The actual ethical re and in- and so I was going through my own ethical codes, uh, ethical conduct shit, and the in our code of ethics for my profession for my specific subset of counseling, and um. You're supposed to transfer, you're supposed to take time and transfer clients if you're switching. Like my boss wasn't even willing. She was so worried about the legal exposure. She was so worried that this mom was going to sue her for invasion of privacy or something because I had allegedly put her at risk legally by, by doing what I did. She needed, she needed to let me go that day. I couldn't ethically transfer my clients to another professional or get set up with another practice and transfer. No, she actually was unethical in that. Is she caused harm by pulling my clients out from underneath me by firing me that way? And you know what? If she had walked in there and said, because she told me, and, and you know, there was other things that happened in the middle too. But at the end, she said it kind of didn't. She said it didn't really matter what you said. I was gonna let you. I was gonna. Ter- I was gonna terminate you or let you go either way. Like that was near the end of the conversation. That's what she said. As I was I, packing up my yep. I Well, I called it because, okay, so, so Ken, here's the reason why I, I asked that question and I made sure to acknowledge that you had a female boss. Um, you've heard this expression, I'm sure, plenty of times. There's no point arguing with a woman, right? You heard that yeah, expression, right? I've heard it. I've disagreed to some degree on it, but. Now, here's why I agree with it. Because with women, they don't use logic and reason. Whereas, okay, let's, let's say you have a position, I have a position, and I'm like this. You know, I, can I really, with this, when men are presented with something that shatters their, whatever it be, like beliefs, it, it's, it's kind of like this. A guy finds out, you remember that show called Cheaters? We're not talking about if it's real or fake or staged, whatever. We're just saying that in general, if you hired a private investigator to find out if your significant other is cheating, right? And the person comes back and has all the evidence, they have the text, pictures video this is when she checked in this is the guy he gives you all the information the guy doesn't get mad at the private investigator right he doesn't say and he starts acting crazy what he does is like this he can be heartbroken but he accepts the reality on the flip side right on the flip side a woman will imagine something that you're cheating Right there, was, I don't know. You guys have heard that story about the guy who uh, who was leaving because he was he, his daughter was getting married, and he was very uh, nervous about dancing in front of people because he wasn't a good dancer. So he was taking he was secretly taking dancing lessons. His wife, because she's irrational, as all they all are, believed he was cheating and ends up yeeting the dude. Right, and then she found out after yeeting him, no, he really wasn't cheating on you, mom. This is the daughter. He was getting dancing lessons because, you know, the, the father of the bride dances with the bride. And then all of a sudden now she's, oh, my God. See, they don't get that. That's why they always say women jump to conclusions. Ken, you were already done regardless. This is why I tell people, man, do not work under woman. And this is one of the main reasons why. Because they're going to use emotion over logic and reason. In fact. So there's a problem we, with that, though. Oh, go ahead. So when you're in a career field like mine, where uh, when I was in grad school, uh, 90%, 90% of the student population for my cohort was female, a field that has swung swung from male dominated, from majority male dominated to majority female dominated, as far as positions in psychology and, and Mental uh, health counseling. Social uh, sciences. So yeah. Clinical, clinical yeah. Social Drex, work. it's like walking into a dentist office okay. and looking for a reasonable person. Because, Kim, this is the reason why that's important. I want to ask you this, Kim. What lunacy have we seen that swung in conjunction with this? this the same is true of the public school. So, don't, don't, like, I mean, this is not me picking on your profession. The public school, everything's become feminized, right? Tell me how much society has flipped due to this shift in. Because here's the thing, there's without male leadership, what you're going to end up with is a constantly shifting goalpost, right? That's why Desmond is amazing is a, is a thing. That's why Sophie Long, isn't it? Ken, do you think anyone would have, would have uh, uh, justified anything that happened in this Sophie Long case being okay 50 years ago, 100 years ago? No way. There's no way. Now, 
Kid, there was someone, there was a, a girl who put up a thing on Facebook or Twitter or whatever that said, uh, gender reveal party tomorrow. I'm going to find out if it's a girl or an abortion. And do you know who was sitting there cheering that? Woman, right? And of course, you know, there's always some beta male cuck out there somewhere. Yeah, because boys are toxic. Th there's never been a time that I've seen where I, that's why, you know, when I, I go hard at these single moms, because of course it should be illegal for women to give advice. It should be illegal for, uh, women to get primary custody of children. Uh, nothing good comes out of this. So your, your profession is yet another casualty because now, think about it, uh, they are sitting there trying to tell kids, oh, you're trans, the kids eight. See, this lunacy, this fuck shit, is a direct result of a feminized field. But go ahead. Oh, I was just, I, I don't remember, I think, where I'd left off, but you know, for me, it's like, I, I'm normally one that likes to question a lot of the things I do, especially in the field. Like, that's one of the things, like, when you're doing this to, like, in grad school, you have to do a thousand hours of uh, clinical contact to even graduate. Uh, during that, you're under the supervisor, uh, under a supervisor, uh, while you're, after you go to grad school and you're working on getting licensure. Uh, in my state, you need at least 1,500 hours of clinical contact and uh, 100 hours of clinical supervision to get your license plus the exam, but the exam's kind of whatever. But I mean, the supervisor's there to like, you know, help you with, you know, are you doing the right thing? Are you crossing it? Like, not, never really had issues with ethics up until this point as far as the the biggest issue I had as far as like work has been. I should always, and it's due to my ADHD, is I've always struggled with getting notes in on time, like typing up notes, and I've gotten them better. I've gotten better at doing that, better at getting notes in on time, but I've never had issues with clients, like having issues with how I do therapy. I've had families so happy to be able to walk out of, you know, to, to, to have their family put back together, to have, you know, that not have the fear of their kid going to just up and run out of the house. That you know, their kids dating now and, you know, their teenagers dating now and that they're, they're, ha they're happy that the kid's able to come and talk about her first boyfriend and, you know, you know, that they're open enough to come and talk about, Hey, you know, we, we kissed or we were thinking about sex. Like they're open enough now to do that. You know, when I first met this family, that was not the case at all. The distrust in this family was awful, but we turned it around. Like, and don't get me wrong, I'm not an expert. Never held, my, never held myself out to be one, to my understanding. And all of this was taken away from these families by no fault of their own. They're the true victims here. And that's actually something that, um, you know, I don't know if any of the people who got me fired are listening to this. Uh, if you are, um, you truly, if you cared about people, if you cared about kids the same way you claim to care about Sophie, you would do something to undo the shit you did. Because there's more than two to two to three dozen people as part of the, because I didn't have that many clients, but that many people attached to that, that are harmed because of what happened. Because their therapist got taken away. People who were not ready to close therapy, who I had developed a level of trust in. You know how much you know how much trust it takes to have a nine year old girl have a detailed discussion with you about uh, sex and looking at porn a lot because she was scared of the consequences because she still was figuring things out and was it was a little bit of other things like you don't get that trust overnight it takes sessions and sessions to develop that level of trust or you just naturally come off as trusting I've usually been lucky with that. So these people now have to rebuild trust if they continue counseling. And I know for a fact of the clients I had, I could pick which ones if they don't continue counseling where things are going to go really bad. And I could almost potentially see those going horrible for them. And it really fucking hurts because they didn't do a goddamn thing wrong. I have That's hidden it. behind oh, this. Oh, it, it's, oh, sorry, I'm not trying to rant here. Uh, you know, I've, I've hidden behind the avatar good. of Ken for a, a, more than a year now. No one has found me. I got found by a fluke. It was a fucking accident. I got found. These people, instead of, you know, 
instead of representing the facts as they will in that email from the uh, the uh, certain someone hit hit knock knock um they made outright lies they they used snarky comments in the language that i could e easily tell that they were like that they were so they they had mentioned something about you know i had privated my videos and i could put them back up at any time and i didn't delete them like obviously i could re-upload them but um you know like they were clearly not telling the truth they made it out to to me to be violating this court order that i was violating the seal that was not the case there was so many th and i wasn't even given a copy of the complaint i have been trying to obtain a copy of my own contract from my boss because i cannot find my personal copy she has not responded and it, and it's uh i've been talking to a couple other people uh people i'm close with in um next discord uh apparently there's some issues about the way i was being held as an employee 1099 versus w2 and some other things um so there's a whole bunch of shit and... yeah Steve, I, I know this from uh employment case law in the u.s if you 1099 with one company you are considered w2 a judge will just say you're w2 because you um uh you are considered to have an employee or employer relationship if you only are a contractor to one client. Well, I have a question for Ken in regards to the, the clients, because uh, that, you know, Ken, when I first heard about you, the first thought was how messed up this is that happened to you and cancel culture. The, I kid you not, the very next thought, even before I got to the fact that, you know, you, you work for women, horrible, 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 horrible thing. Uh, my very next thought, Ken, was the effect that this would have on your clients. I have a question for you, Ken. Did this boss who wanted to can you so bad over uh, a bunch of hearsay, did she ever bring up the effect this would have on your clients? Um, that's a good question. Let me think about that for a second. Um, she well, brought up... about that. Oh. Oh, it's okay. I, I'm just thinking, like, I don't remember her mentioning it to that degree she mentioned my ethical obligations how i was violating them she kept using like ev like i was saying earlier every time i would defend myself or try to like bring up an argument she would keep like getting pissed off and using like metaphors and shit she's like be saying like you know i'm you know you know i'm splitting hairs on legality or uh, or i'm towing the line as far oh, as yeah, whether I'm le whether it's legal or not and i'm like it's hey. not i'm not towing the line it's clearly not illegal to do what i'm doing i'm she doing literally got those things. arguments watching an episode of oprah well ken i actually want to get your take on this uh because of course you know as you know we have to fight cancel culture and karen's i want you to tell the people out there uh you know this is in the profession that you chose can you go into the psychology of a karen um so as a non-expert uh and as someone who as uh, just to make sure I clarify my credentials so no one takes out of context. Oh, because um, I haven't mentioned this yet. Uh, so my job was called and emailed. My job was emailed at least once. I'm sure it was emailed more than once. Uh, and they were called more than once because my boss had stated at the beginning of the meeting, uh, you know, she was wanting to know why for the last two days she's been, her, the phones have been blowing up about the stuff I've been doing online and stuff. Like, like basically was saying that there was a lot of phone calls about what had been going on. And that was, so that was for the last two days being Monday and Tuesday, because no one knew, no one called until Monday. I don't believe anyone was able to call on Sunday. Um, one were closed and two, if they had left a voicemail early in the day, I would have heard about it before that late in the day. Um, but as far as, oh, shit, I lost my train of thought. Sorry. Uh, you had asked the question about. Well, yeah, just th their psychology. Like, so, th th okay, so one of the reasons why I bring this up is because the whole, the Karen pandemic goes hand in hand with cancel culture and big tech censorship and government. They all go hand in hand. And there's an origin of a Karen, right? The, you know, there's, there's how does the Karen fester and your own personal experience. Karens do have a psychology, right? When I mean, you see them having all these emotional outbursts or, or falsely accusing people, blah, blah, blah. Like, there's a psychology to this kind of demonic creature. 
And your profession, I'm sure that, you know, whether you had to deal with them directly or if you, you know, were, were kind of, you know, second or third hand, just go into the, just how does a, a woman become a Karen? So one of the things that I've noticed, and this is my personal opinion, this is not attached to my profession, uh, disclaimer, insert disclaimer here. Um, I've noticed a pattern in people who do this is there's, and if you look at the people who, who, for example, docked me and were responsible for contacting my employer, or at the very least who've been gloating about my firing, right? Just those people for, for a subset of people. To, to kind of go off of there there's a desire for control right so they're in this effort of theirs whether the, you know their support of the mom you know being this group of people they were very supportive of the mother of the in this case i don't think i mentioned that earlier and so the document i was reading did not make the mom out to look that well uh, allegedly right and so the fact that i was reading it and the fact that they thought I had a document that I didn't have and that they were scared to have read out loud um, is a, it's kind of back to a control thing, right? Is, and you see this in a lot of relationships and stuff too, is people's fear of losing control is a huge thing. When you do not have the ability to have a control over your destiny, a control over what happens next, it causes people significant levels of distress right if you're in the passenger seat of a car and someone's drunk driving how scared are you how how fearful are you, for your life are you when they start going up 60 70 80 miles an hour just thinking about that what kind of fear comes across your mind right yep. you don't have the you don't get to hold the wheel you don't get to say what happens they at any point could flip that wheel left or right and you're dead yep you know and that just the thought of it's on its own, just the hypothetical is anxiety inducing to some people. So uh -huh. think about it in that context of, you know, the, there's these people who are talking about the, this, this case, they're bringing up the old documents, right? They're bringing up these old documents and they're talking negative in the, in the, the language is negative about the mom. It mentions the kids, you know, these, these quote unquote fake allegations of abuse to them, um, that, you know, there's these details in there about the kid's genitalia, about, you know, the things that happened, you know, this person, they can't read this. This is harming to the child. Why would they do that? So you see how the dominoes start to fall or the anxiety builds up and builds up. And it's like, there's this desire for control. And what's one way you can control it. You can stop it. So how do you stop it? You stop them from speaking. You stop them from speaking by flagging their channel, from reporting it, uh, contacting their employer, figuring out who they are and trying to call them, uh, yep. all trying to literally both Sunday and Monday, they tried to derail my show because I was trying to talk about the documents both days. Sunday got derailed so bad I couldn't finish on Sunday because I was going to do something else more fun on Monday. Uh -huh. That was not the case, obviously. And since then, uh, I've been dealing with my own depression and anxiety. And so is my wife. Thank you guys for that. Um, but they derailed the stream. They were kept saying, let us on the panel, let us on. We want to talk. We want to talk, uh, like real pushy. Um, we're, we're like, you know, what, why aren't you showing the missing? Why aren't you showing the missing poster? Why aren't you showing that Sophie's missing? Uh, you know, why isn't that up? Why do you have, why are you bringing up these old documents? Uh, that these aren't, these aren't pertinent anymore. They've shown new documents show that the dad's, uh, the dad's the one that's been, abusive and all this other stuff and like thing after thing after thing after thing there was because so here's the surprise guys ready so i pulled down my videos i pulled down all my old content right as of tuesday i've released a video which is the first actual video i've ever released on my channel uh there will also be new youtube shorts coming soon and we will be doing streams again in the very near future I'm hoping for Friday or Saturday to do a stream. So we will be back to doing things in the very near future. We will also be doing, um, I believe I'm setting aside episode 17 for it. But episode 17 will be episode 14, part two, re-release Boogaloo. And that will be re-releasing the episode that I was fired on. 
So we'll be going yeah. through and we'll be putting that back up. Uh, what I did is the reason I haven't put that up for people to see yet is one, I needed to screen record the video next to the chat because I needed to get everyone's chat messages before they were taken down uh -huh. because I knew that was going to happen. I knew that was going to happen. Uh, and I couldn't have that happen without, because I needed to preserve the evidence. Uh, Cause if I put, if I unprivate the video and make it public again, people can go in and delete their live chat messages. Yeah. I needed to keep a record of it for any legal things I might need it for because there's, uh, I haven't, spoken to a lawyer uh, i was waiting to get my contract to speak to more than one lawyer for multiple opinions but since i'm probably not getting that at this point um i don't know what the next steps are because i need to actually call him later do you find it disturbing that these people don't care what they do to you at all like, like they, they have no, like there's, there's no sense of empathy there's just like it's righteous drexel that's yeah, 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 that yeah, in, yeah. Them, in their brain in their brain they, the delusion exists that well, Ken brought this upon himself and all the talking about what the harm it's done to his clients. Well, that's Ken's fault. He shouldn't have, he shouldn't have done it. He forced me to do this, uh, yeah. Drexel. They, he he forced me to call his employer and put a stop to him because he's dangerous. It's all his yeah, fault. It's, and, well, and, and big tech helps all of these Karens uh, uh, enact cancel culture. All, all of this is just leading to totalitarian rule. I hope a lot of you people understand that. I hope the women understand that they're just useful pawns uh, in uh, total communism. But in regards to what happened to Ken, you know, we, we, you know, we even talked about this even before the show opened, Ken, just the very nature of cancel culture and the, the tyrannical authoritarian uh, past, overcast that it, it puts on everybody. And you, we always see the double standard, though, right? Because cancel culture is not about you know, right or wrong. It's about, um, it's basically about your, your perspective, right? If you are in one boat, you're always right, right? And the other side is wrong. It, we, we see this happening with like, you know, we, we see these situations with like what happened to Johnny Depp, Vic Mignogna. If someone looks at somebody, and, and uh, I think, I believe that was Grim Lord who posted uh, that, that picture of that hideous uh, creature, uh, Jess Zimmerman, who says it's time to give up on facts, and it says, or at least to temporarily lay them down in favor of a more useful weapon, emotions. Because see, Ken, you know this, these people don't care about facts. They don't care about facts in Vic Mignogna's case, Johnny Depp's case. They said Johnny Depp put hands on Amber Heard and the place was a, a ransack, blah, blah, blah. And then the, they, they had the video where the cops show up and the place was in immaculate shape, and Johnny Depp wasn't even there. Because see, the, the narrative is what matters to these people, right? It's all about a narrative. The same is true about Black Lives Matter and all these other people. It's all about narrative, right? And I look at your, your situation, Ken, and as tragic as it is, I do have uh, to pose this. What do you believe is the best strategy to combat Karens and cancel culture? So that kind of relates sort of to the thing I just posted in the chat. So oh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I see it right there, yeah. I was, the highlighted section under number four in... Uh, I think number five are interesting. So someone sent me this uh, after, uh, and so I've had several people, again, that i am been very trusting with information and have been in the, in, the, in, the, in the close circles with all this shit, really. Uh, the people who I've shared very critical things to, uh, to help kind of figure this stuff out. Uh, they saw parts of this email uh, as a veiled threat. And this isn't all of it, but this is like their major like to-do list part of it where they were trying because this person had sent me an email with like trying to kind of back piece together like how the docs happened and they're they tried this is trying to lay the blame kind of on other people and i kind of saw it at the time but it kind of didn't but it's more clear with this email but number four where it talks about uh, choose between my career and all my online activities is they mentioned that uh i you know, I must choose between my career or my online activities. They say this whole First Amendment being offensive is my civil right. Women are inferior. 4chan or the Donald Manosphere thing. It's simply not compatible with your line of work. You can't do both. You can say that it's not fair and you can push back against that, but it's just not going to work out. Now, if you want to transition to being someone who works for themselves and make a living being a YouTuber, okay, but you must decide now. So effectively, they're trying to tell me I can't do both. Um, and then it goes on to say, I should erase my online identity. Uh, so, and that I should step away from all this. Uh, and that I shouldn't continue to talk about this, basically. 
and that I should focus on my family and my wife, which I should, I should. And I'm still seeking employment. I'm seeking, I'm still looking for new employment. I've been trying to kind of piece together a lot of evidence for whether or not uh, a potential legal case is worthwhile. And at this point, I don't think there's any chance of a successful legal case unless I can get that contract and I can get the information from it. Uh, because without it, I don't have a case in my state for un un uh, un a wrongful termination because the employee laws are that weak, is my understanding so far. I would have a contract, uh, a, break, a breach of contract lawsuit, depending on what happens to be in my contract. Um, now, there is a potential interesting thing is prior to 2021, uh, so I received a, with the way my, where, where I'm at and the way my pay structure was, I received a flat rate per hour uh, for counseling, right? So we charged whatever, but I, was, I received a certain rate per hour. And it was my responsibility in 2020 to take care of my own taxes, to set aside money for taxes. Uh, starting in 2021, my boss had talked to her, a uh, financial person, and she had started pulling, setting aside a certain amount of money from each each of those hours of counseling to be used for taxes. It amounted to roughly 14 and a half, 15 percent uh, that she had pulled out of the check or out of each clinical hour of fee to use for. Uh, taxes. But I've never received a formal pay stub the entire time I've been there. She's always just cut like business checks, like here's your check, here's how many clinical hours you worked, and here's a print off from your clinical calendar showing the client you saw that two week period. Uh, I was told that in my state there's supposed to be uh, an actual formal pay stub with every check uh, that lists all your stuff off, which I thought was interesting. Um, it's supposed to show you accounting of taxes and stuff. So also if she did switch from a 1099 to W-2 to start paying taxes or whatever, or however the plan is for that to work, um, I never signed a new contract. So that's another interesting situation. Um, so I'm going to need to call my lawyer back, or not my lawyer, but the lawyer I was in contact with, and see what he thinks about this, because this may have evolved into something completely different. Uh, as far as that goes, because she did take aside effectively 15% of each of my clinical hours worth of pay to be used for taxes, but I've never seen how that money is being apportioned for taxes. I don't think she was stealing or anything like that. I think she's too on the up and up. Uh, you know, she was so concerned about litigation with me, uh, with being sued because of me talking about this case, that she fired me on the spot. And she was told by someone close to her that she needed to distance herself as far and as fast as possible away from me uh, by someone close to her in the field as like a mentor to her that because of what I did, that she needed to get as far and fast away from me as possible, uh, which was great to hear, by the way, when you're extremely emotional uh, and upset and, and when you're being told that it didn't matter what I could have come in there. And it had everything laid out perfectly. And she said it didn't matter. I would have been fired anyway, apparently. Yeah. Um, I could do that. <laughs> so listen, Drexel, I tried to, because she was like, because she said she had made, said something about, from, she was reading off of the email at one point, like reading it, like not actually reading it word for word, but reading it when she was mentioning things. And she mentioned something. I was like, that did not happen. I said, I can guarantee for a fact that it did not happen. She said, you guarantee your job on it? I was like, yep. that did not happen. I can prove it to you. It's in the video. She's like, we'll pull it up. I'm like, okay. I'm like, it's like a four hour stream. I have to find it uh, because I'm not sure where it's at. And she's like, I don't have time for that. <laughs> and I'm not joking. I, I'm, she I, said that because she's, she spent, she, so she blocked me off between two and three o'clock for the meeting, um, which to be make, which to be fair, makes sense. She didn't know how long the, the stream was prior to the meeting to my understanding. Uh, so I get that. I offered, I said, I can go through and clip the information out and bring it back to you. No. Uh, Cause I said, I can go out and I can go and research the information pulled out of the stream. Cause I was trying to do that the day before. Uh, I was just under so much fucking like stress. Like, cause this happened on Monday night. So Monday afternoon, I got the phone call. Uh, Tuesday was the, the meeting and termination. And due to my wife being extremely ill, I was not able to inform her till Thursday. And because I did not want to put that on her plate with how sick she was those couple days. Uh -huh. And so I was already weighing 
all of this on my own. Because you know what the first thing I did after I walked out of the office at my old, my old office was? You know what the first thing I did was? Oh, clients. Huh? No. I had I had to literally go straight from my office to the VA clinic that I that I have my my visits and stuff out of for my, oh, my yeah. health stuff and for my mental health. I had to drive from my office to the VA clinic, which thankfully isn't far. And I had to sit in that waiting room for a walk-in mental health appointment. Wow. Because I was so devastated by what happened. Like, I could not believe this had just happened. I could not believe I wasn't given the chance to even defend myself. I couldn't even, she wouldn't watch a second of it. There's no way she could have seen a second of it because I pulled the video down. (laughs) There was no, so for me, it's like, how can you, like, I get that we had our issues. Like, we had tensions. Like, we had a, an interesting relationship work wise. Like, she loved the shit I would do, but she hated the way I did certain things. She hated, like, certain ways I did things because I'm, I'm passionate about certain things. But still, I've always done nothing but try to help that business. It wasn't my business. I had no fucking stake in it, but it didn't matter. I was hoping to help be part of the practice and help it grow. And, and that's why I spent extra time. And I, you know, I got paid half half of what I got paid doing counseling to do IT stuff, to do website stuff, to do backends. Like I didn't get paid as much anywhere close to my counseling rate. And it's not like I make great, great money with my counseling rate, but still I would do IT stuff for extra cash and to help out the business. Oh man. When I hear that someone, when I hear that you've done the IT guy so dirty at a business, I, I pop a giant erection. I'm telling you, I, I could kill a partridge with this thing right now, Drex. I'm so engorged. Oh, it's stupid. It, yeah, never. Yeah, someone who's in, who knows the inner workings of the infrastructure. Yeah, uh, never yeah. do the <laughs> IT guy dirty. Never. Yeah, that's just foolish. Hey, Ken, I have something for you. You talked about the the first thing that you did after the the meeting with your boss, and this this ties into something that that i talk about quite often which you know when i tell people uh that you know no one cares about men can you describe what resources are available to men struggling with the effects of cancel culture with it you know in terms of mental health and all that stuff like what obviously you you can go to the va but let's just say let's just say for the sake of argument you are not a veteran what resources would have been available to you um if i well would i have my own therapist yeah, so, so let's just say you're, you're a guy who gets canceled, but you, you, were, you never served in the service, right? So you, you can't go to the VA. So well, if I mean, you I didn't go serve... Own therapist, if I had like an outside, like a, if you have health insurance or you have, um, you know, access to therapy in your local area, I mean, there's therapists pretty much everywhere now. Um, mm-hmm. Thanks to telehealth, you can get therapy online uh, te- over the computer. It's very simple. You don't have to do anything special. Like... I used to give my clients a link that was basically, um, uh, they say telehealth.com slash Ken, and they would go to that and they would just put their name in and click OK. And that's all they had to do. And so it was very simple to log in and do therapy remotely. So it's very easy to get to the, to get access to it in that regard. You don't have to be able to drive. You just have to have internet access nowadays. Yeah. I'm not Honestly, just talk of- to Mama Vic. She's all the therapy you'll ever need. Oh, um, yeah. Her, her like own Mama son Vic. is dealing with all this. I love Mama Vic. I have some disagreements with her on a few things, but I love Mama Vic. Uh, but I, I'm, I would not recommend it. Uh, I mean, I didn't do that, and I still got canceled. So there's, there's your level to kind of measure against. Uh, oh, yeah. But, it keeps changing. The goalpost keeps changing. But um, no, it, it, there, so depending on where you're at, different therapy practices do different things, right? Uh, no two therapy practices are ever going to be the same. Uh, some therapy practices they work with primarily insurance. Uh, some my my practice that I used to work at, we did insurance and we did a lot of EAPs, uh, employee assistance programs. So that's really helpful. Is check with your uh, HR department, check with your company. A lot of companies have them now. Um, there's something called an employee assistance program, and what it normally is is it's for for staff and stuff at your company, and it also can normally apply to your family too. So if you have sibling or if you have um, kids or a spouse or something like that, you can get them help too through the EAP. And it's not through the insurance. It's a separate thing. Normally, it's just it's wrapped in as something that the company provides as a wellness benefit. 
is you can normally get like three to six sessions of counseling for free. Like you go in, you say, uh, you go and talk to your people and say, or they'll give you a phone number. Like this is our EAP provider. You can call them and say, hey, I want to get a counseling session. I'm dealing with X. Uh, and they'll look for places in the area that accept your EAP. And they, so for example, they would say like, okay, we have uh, one of our, per the EAP would call our office and say, uh, yes, we have uh, Mr. John Doe. He's been, he's a 30 something year old male. He's dealing with depression and he's looking for counseling. Do you have any counseling appointments available? Are you taking new patients? And we would go yes or no. Yeah, we can see him then. That works you for him. You just doxed John. Schedule. I'm calling the police. Okay, Maddox. And <laughs> so you take, you know, so that gets you access to like six sessions of counseling. And so for a lot of people, counseling is not this drawn out thing. Uh, one of the types of ways you try to do counseling is you try to do, uh, the goal is to not have people in counseling long term. You don't really need to be in counseling long term. You know, normally uh, you can do what's called, it's a type, there's like brief therapies where it's like the goal is six to 12 sessions tops. So that's, you know, a month and a half to three months of counseling. If you assume weekly, you know, you can normally knock out a lot of things in that or at least put you on the right track. So, so most people, you know, a good chunk of people might be dealing with a mild to moderate depression. So it's not severe. They can be managed in six sessions or they can, uh, or at least those six sessions get them started. And then they decide, Hey, I kind of might need more counseling. I'll go through my insurance or I'll pay out of pocket or I'm good for now. And then depending on your EAP, you can sometimes use your EAP for a different issue that's unrelated. It's it depends. It's different for each one because there's so many goddamn EAPs. It's ridiculous. Like the paperwork's fucking ridiculous. And it's not electronic yet for a lot yeah. of them. But um, so, yeah, you have to fill out like paper forms and shit. But the EAPs is a fantastic fucking way to get counseling access for anyone who's got, you know, your your day to day kind of job kind of thing like check with your company like your if you work for a big company if you work for a chain most of them have an eap of some kind if you work for anything that's not a small business they probably have some form of eap if you work for the government there's probably an eap in there somewhere i guarantee you it's in there somewhere um if you're struggling financially uh there are ways to get counseling cheaper uh places will do and i don't like the idea of it because i think it it's asking too much information from someone, but places will do what's called like a sliding scale based on your finish, your ability to pay. So depending on your income, you will be able to pay so much. Uh, so like if the, a lot of places will use like the, the poverty scale, like the, the federal poverty guideline. So if you make less than 200% of the poverty line, um, you'll get a discount or you'll pay X amount per session or whatever. Um, other places, and this is how I'll probably end up doing it when I open my own practice down the road, is uh, doing what's called a grant or blocking off so many, uh, blocking off a percentage of uh, so many sessions per day or week uh, for uh, for free counseling. Or I actually like the way my boss did it, is she didn't do free count like she had a few clients where they had really no ability to pay. Uh, but instead of, you know, doing a sliding scale, she would have them pay $5. Buy $5. Why not just do it for free? And there's actually, and this is why I don't necessarily hate my boss. I disagree with what she did, but she was very smart in a lot of ways, especially with counseling and, and a lot of the business stuff. I just think she made a very poor decision in a very worked up state because, you know, she was obviously... Now we've had our, our issues and because of the concerns of legal liability, I think she, she may have overreacted. That's where I'm at. I don't know. I don't want to say she's a horrible person because I learned a lot while working with her. Uh, she provided a lot of insight and a lot of it's going to be helpful stuff that carries forward. So I can't be like all pissed at her, but she would charge five bucks because if you do it for free, there's no investment. If you do five bucks, even for five bucks, it's still some form of investment that makes the person, you know, they're not just going to show up and not be part of it. They mm -hmm. still have to want to pay the five bucks. They still have to want to participate because you can just offer a free session 
and then block out the time and then they no show on you and then there's no consequence because they don't show right like oh it's a free counseling session i don't really have to come but when they have to pay for it there's still some consequences to it you can still set up a no show fee structure for them on a on a on a lower scale like our no show fee was 75 bucks right mm-hmm. if you no showed or if you uh, canceled within 24 hours which for me i used to say if you let me know before the session, it, like if you let me know by like 9 a.m. the same day, I don't care because I'm flexible. Like I didn't care that much. Like just let me know so I'm not like sitting there with my thumb up my ass. Like that way I can be doing something else. That like was putting my, your other thumb in your ass. Both thumbs up my ass. I need both hands. And that works better. Uh, it's much more pleasurable. And that's how you can get you know places they'll do either free counseling very very low cost they'll do sliding scale some will do therapy grants where if you can show that you're low income or if you don't have the means to pay you can do that um like different places for example that so look for colleges and shit that do um that have programs that do like clinic that do social so look for schools that have a masters of social work program Look for schools that have a master's program in counseling, a master's or doctorate program in psychology, a master's program in mental health counseling, a master's program in uh, marriage and family therapy. Because sometimes you'll find that they have clinics that they'll do free counseling or they'll find a way to have offer free counseling in a way because they need people who are working in their clinical hours during grad school during their master's program, they need those hours. So there's a way to get free hours. You don't have to pay. They can't charge anyway. It works out. So there's ways, you know, different schools will do that. Each school's different. Um, If you're in college, a lot of schools have access to uh, free counseling uh, at your school. You don't have to pay for it. You can go go to counseling. It doesn't cost a dime. Uh, It's part of your enrollment package normally government if you're if you have any kind of insurance uh basic mental health i think is covered now thanks to obamacare um so you can get regular therapy thanks, visits. Obama. Uh, medicaid if you have medicaid uh if you're like low income or if you're if you have a minor in the household and you have medicaid for them um medicaid covers counseling for free the the issue with that is a lot of places aren't taking Medicaid anymore for counseling. Like the place I used to work at did do Medicaid, but there was like a three month wait list because Oof. it was working with kids and we would drive to their homes. Like we would go to their homes. And so it wasn't like, uh, you know, they would come into our office. It was a cool, it was a cool job. But the also downside to that is Medicaid notes are stupidly, ridiculously long. Like I had to write like a four page note to do Medicaid notes. With my current job, because it's either insurance or cash clients, or what was my current job was either uh, insurance or cash clients, I could write a paragraph note, and that was more than enough. You've mentioned the whole uh, writing notes thing. I feel like it's there's more to it than simply jotting down what happened in the session. Is that is that Uh, true? So that depends. Uh, There's a couple different ways that notes can be taken. Uh, So there's like two sets of notes you can keep right there's like the notes that go on your chart like for the client's chart say they have insurance that it, when it gets billed off to insurance it gets attached to that chart for insurance purposes and for privacy purposes i've always kept that note very vague and i used to tell parents this too is uh and i told this in front of their kids too on the very first session i keep my notes vague so one it protects your privacy for whatever reason and two that mom and dad can't just go snoop on your chart and and request your records and go, aha, that's what, that's what Ken's talking about uh, in session with you. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a common name, so it's whatever, but um, even so, yeah, it's Ken. (laughs) That would be the irony is if this was my whole name the whole time. Um, Ken Jennings. Yeah. It's literally Ken Jennings. But uh, fuck, what was I talking about? God damn it. My brain's not working today. You're explaining how notes work. Oh, no. It's, yeah. So I would write maybe a paragraph. Now, this is, you know, we talked about this brief subject. And I used to tell that to families in the beginning. And I never once had a parent bitch about it, really, as far as like 
them snooping. And then I used to tell them, like, I'm not saying you would, but there are parents who would, or I have had, I, w- I would say, you know, I've had parents in the past who would, you know, want to know what's really going on. And by telling that to the parents and the kids in the same time in the same space, the kids know that I'm trying to protect their privacy and I'm trying to have trust with them. The parents know that I want that relationship with them and that I want their kids to be able to trust them enough to tell them directly that they don't need to snoop around. It works in multiple ways. It can come off to look like I'm trying to keep things hidden, right? Like, oh, why wouldn't he want, why wouldn't he want people to know what's going on in the session? Well, no, it's not your business, even as the parent, even if it's your kid. Unless it's something I feel is urgent that I'm going to bring up with your kid and say, look, mom and dad kind of need to know about this. It's not something I have to report, but mom and dad probably need to know about this. And I've never had to do that much, you know, because either they'll open up about it or they'll give me permission to tell because my clients have trusted me that much, right? I'll say, you can talk to my mom about this. You can tell my dad about that. They never really fought me on it. I never pushed them on things either. Hey, you're not ready? That's fine. We can wait. It's when you're ready to talk to them about it. But it was nothing that would put them in harm's way or put them at risk. You know, maybe it was, you know, I didn't tell, I haven't shown mom and dad that my report card came in three weeks ago. Okay, is it going to harm the kid if uh, the parents don't know about the report card? Not really. Are they doing better on their grades? Yeah, but did they get a shade report card a little bit? But it's not so harming to them. It's not damaging to them, right? That's just an example, you know. But I can see that. That's there's there's a few issues with the whole the whole process itself and the way the way that you work with docs, the way that all this kind of like it, it, it's kind of like what you said. We have like one issue that becomes so many others. And Ken, let me ask you this: When it comes to the, just like the complacency of everyone who's on the outside of of all this, right? Of all the Karens, of all the Reen, of all the, the the rainbow agenda, of all this, why you know, like like in your profession, why do you think so many people are apathetic to uh, you know the, the the serious causes until it affects them, right? Like the like people see about you know whether it be the doxing, uh, you know, the Sophie Long case kind of uh, highlights a lot of things, right? With 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 uh, the, the whole mom's boyfriend thing, people keeping devious acts under wraps. Like, what do you think causes people to be so complacent out there? So can you, re- can you reward that one more time just to make sure I hear it properly? Cause I, oh, I yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm just saying like, what do you think is, uh, why, why do you think so many people are apathetic to serious causes until it affects them? You know what I'm saying? Whether it be all these cases out here that matters. Like, it doesn't affect them. That's the thing. But, but even when they know it affects them indirectly, right? Like a prime example. Me too affects guys, or here, let me rephrase that. It can affect any guy, anytime, anywhere, right? Like anytime you can get me too. Ask Vic, ask you, in a sense, Johnny Depp and others, right? You just, anytime you can get canceled in me too. Yet it's like people just don't seem to take it. They're like, well, eh, you know. It's, it's easier to detach yourself from. So, it, like, for example, even with the Vic stuff, right? And I've actually had to tell people the inverse is following the stuff on Twitter over the last couple of years with Vic. I've seen people get so invested in the Vic shit that I'm like, dude, you need to step back. You're hurting yourself by, I, I get wanting to stand up for Vic. I get trying to do that. But when you're trying to fight these people, you're damaging your mental health. Someone actually mentioned to me yesterday in Nick's discord, you know, cause I had meant I had wrote an e- I responded to someone with an email where I basically said, because they were someone that was accused of doxing me. And I told them in the email, I don't think you're one of the people that doxed me. Um, and even so, you know, based on the information I have, this person, I think, was one of the people responsible, and they're just trying to throw you under the bus. But in that email, I told them if they want to release this, they can. You know, even if you did, at this point, I just want, you know, the people to own up to the shit they did and the harm they caused. And if they really care, you know, undo the harm they did. You know, so... And because I, I used the example, you know, it wasn't just me they harmed. If they care about my family, so my wife, my pets, you know, no one knows if I have kids or not. I could have kids that could be starving right now. Right. So there's that. Um, I have dozen, I have more than a dozen clients, active clients. And there, it's not just them, it's their families, it's their loved ones, it's their friends. Every single one of them 
is harmed by what you guys did. And I put this in the email. I said, at this point, I would just like for them to own up to it. Say, yeah, I did this. And if you really care about the harm you did, it was more harm than what I did. So if I allegedly harmed Sophie by talking about it, if I harmed the family by talking about it, y'all did uh, harm on orders of magnitude much greater than I did. So if we really want to talk about harm, you guys can undo it by by fixing the shit you did, by redacting or, or, or retracting the shit you said. You guys could technically undo it. And so someone told me, uh, you know, there's, you know, you keep talking, you know, you keep talking about this. You keep trying to talk about these Karens and stuff. Uh, you know, is it harming your mental health? I'm like, no, at this point, it's kind of therapeutic. And two is with that statement out there, there's no way it harms me because I've never admitted fault to anything. I've never apologized for what I did. You know, I, I haven't done anything wrong. Of all the things I've ever been confident about in my life, there's been a few situations where, for example, there was one job interview. I know I nailed and I didn't get it. And I'm pretty sure it was because I was a male because I was working with uh, sex abuse victims. And I was the only male to interview for it in, a in a, basically an all-female clinic when I was doing my graduate level internships. Um, there was a couple other situations in my life I know I've done shit right on. I know I didn't violate any ethics. I know I didn't violate any laws. I will stand well, by Well, you're that. a dude. Uh, so, Ken, as long as you have a dick swinging between your legs, you are wrong. In this society, How it doesn't matter what it is. Dick swinging between my legs. That's the okay. You're, you're in large clip. <laughs> obviously, yes. you need to cut it off right now. Oh, yeah, obviously, um, it needs to be removed. On, on that topic, Tim, did you ever tell uh, Drexel that that thing that I opened up about on my one stream, or no? Uh, fuck it, I can't. I don't remember. Uh, and uh, no. we, we're gonna have to wrap up this anytime uh, uh, soon. Anyways, we're going for what? In, uh, okay. The, there was an, there was an irony about that. Uh, it's funny that you mentioned that that topic came up real quick, Drex. Is um, there was a stream I did recently, uh, a couple of weeks before I got uh, docs, and um, I had talked about um, and it's funny because Keck Seven Go from Nick's Discord went on a stream with one of the Karens to 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 talk about how how uh, horrible they were being with addressing me, but I was talking about uh, how I had been diagnosed with gender dysphoria many years several years ago at this point and how i've had to deal with that and so keck went on and basically trolled them about my pronouns and it was the funniest shit and i yeah that that whole conversation well first of all keck is the single gayest entity that i can I think i do of. not care that was the funniest fuck i'm it's like day one or two after being doxxed and i'm I listening this to this loving. and i'm like oh my god keck i love you so much yeah, okay. well, it, it, it's one of the things that's great, Ken, is that, you know, one of the things that you'll notice about all of this cancel culture stuff and, and, and this Karen mania, right? The, the thing you, you notice is that they're so intent on excusing the worst behaviors of their, you know, their supposed opponent, right? It doesn't matter if the, if the person is, you know, they're anti pedo In this case, that would be you. You're the opponent, the anti-Trumpers, the anti-Biden, whatever. And yet they'll excuse anything for the people that they do like, right? They have that, that intrinsic bias. They have all these things. And yet, as we look at this, Ken, what do you think we can do to, you know, what, what role can men and women play to nullify the inner Karen, or I guess uh, we need a, a term for the, the, you know, the male version of Karen, right? These SJWs, how do we prevent this? You have to, and so that's actually, let me see if I can find it real quick, because it's actually critical in a way, because it was such an insightful, uh, message that I got from someone is like I said, I've gotten multiple emails uh, about from people about this situation. And this is fucked up about all this, Ken. Um, do you know the whole uh, Drex? You know the whole believe all women, right? But for some reason, we're, we don't believe Sophie. No, we don't. No, no, no. It, 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 because it, it has to fit the here's the thing it has to be the right woman. So, so here's the thing if okay, watch this believe all women, okay. Then when Mama Vic says, my son didn't do it, no, 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 we don't believe her. <laughs> you see how that works? Or, it, or when it, Sophie's like, yeah, I, I'm being abused. No, we don't I, believe I her. believe that. No, no. No, and we're going to viciously attack anyone who uh, covers this. Yep. Well, I mean, you've, done more, you've done more to enable child sexual abuse than you have to stop 
Uh, I guess invasion of privacy is the angle they're going after. I, I really don't even know what their complaint is at its material level, but you, you guys are enabling this, and you wholeheartedly endorse it. Yeah, I'll oh. say it again. Go on, mail us. Mail us a letter. You wholeheartedly endorse the sexual abuse of a minor child. So we so, don't know for a fact if there's actual sexual abuse or not. I feel comfortable. I'm operating on the opinion that opinion. It's an opinion. I'm operating on the opinion that it is because I believe all women can. So even so, I even within my field, right? We're not, you know, we're told to, you know, take things kind of at face value. We're not there to judge and say whether or not someone's allegation is true or not, which is a fair point, right? Now, you always, you can trust but verify. Trust but verify. I trust that Sophie at that point was her allegation. There's too many things that to coach to that degree, you need to be good. Like you got to be like, I could coach a kid to do that. But it would take a lot of effort to, because if you pay attention, it's not just her allegation. Like, watch her body language. Watch the change of inflection in her voice. Like, there's too much. And I'm not saying yeah, it's so sexual. Something is it happening. unlikely, right? It, it, the unlikeliness of the opposite being true far outweighs the likeliness of her statement being true, right? So here's, here's a common way to know whether you're dealing in bullshit or not. Make the opposite conclusion, and how much of the truth do you need to bend to make the opposite true? In this case, you have to have you had to have done hundreds of hours of coaching and rehearsal and practice. You've probably shot thirty different videos, thirty different versions to get the exact correct uh, version that you wanted, and you had to keep that secret from the mother the entire time. And then Does why is it just suddenly plausible? coming out now? Yeah. That's where it's... Does that sound plausible to you? Not even close. Not even close to plausible. Not to yeah, that degree the, to me. The opposite, right? The opposite of that. Well, yes, yeah, so abuse did happen. Well, that's extremely plausible. In fact, it's likely what happened. It's not enough for a criminal conviction, but it absolutely would hold up in civil court. These people are scum, man. I mean, plain and simple, they're just scum. Uh, the, the things that they are are uh, excusing and uh, endorsing, right? And then the things that they are attacking. So it is what it is. Uh, Ken, you do have a uh, GoFundMe if you want to shout that out and anything that people want to do to help you, we'll, uh, we'll let you uh, have that as we close out the show, man. Go ahead. So yeah, I was real quick hoping I could go over this email I received because I think oh, it's a very... So, and I'll do that and then I'll plug my GoFundMe and then you guys can wrap. Is, um, so I got an email yeah, from someone me, who was, I know, it was someone who was part of my original stream that I got fired on. They were commenting on it and they were very, they disagree with me, but in the days following, they didn't think that people, and in that stream, they were saying, you know, don't harass him. Don't be content. Like they were like still siding with me on that. And it was, you know, like, and I told them, you know, I'm like, thank you for being able to disagree with me and not like some of the things we're saying, but agree that this is too far. So they sent me this email that says, hello, Ken. And we had been messaging back and forth. They said, apologies on my reply. I've been suffering from migraines. Uh, and they were talking about some comments they had made and towards the end of my live stream. They asked me to redact when I put the video live again, which I'm going to do because they've, they're very personal things. They said, apart from my, you know, they, they talked about this really horrible, traumatic situation of theirs in my live chat. They said, apart from my psychiatrist and psychologist, I've never been that upfront with details about that night before but spoke of it as a way to state what we hear online can be upsetting for some. However, the more I think it over, everything you were doing was absolutely fine, and I think I got caught amongst the dramatic people within the live. I personally have learned so much from your live and self-reflection and how I needed to step back from quite a few people I've been associating with on YouTube. I am happy for you to use your own discretion on how you speak upon anything that I said within your live, and I hope day by day, little steps if needed, you get back to a place where you feel con where you feel content on going live again on your channel and that you return to employment and not left in a rut. You're a good person and you deserve more respect than you've been shown, kind regards, and then her name. This person also went out of their way to make a five and a half minute apology video on YouTube to take accountability for their things that they did. 
as far as like how they were kind of in the moment kind of hate piling on me very upset with me and had overreacted i have not let yet listened to it but they sent it to me in an email uh this morning i think but like that's yeah. just one of the people who have flipped on this they're like this is like too far yeah like, it's crazy uh there will be no reasoning with the devil and that's these people are literally the devil um, there is no reasoning with the devil. They won't change their mind. They won't apologize. But They're I have not- changed their minds. That's the thing. Dead. I've changed a lot of people's minds already. I've got people to support me. I've got people to give me money from their side. Now, I will say, I will say uh, this though, Ken. I agree with you there. I don't believe someone has changed until they have skin in the game, right? We donated money. We we you know are advocates for you, like. You have to go put your name out there. You know, so that you have to actually do like like actions, right? So when people are emailing you and they're donating and they're, they're doing things like that, that speaks more than someone just you know paying lip service. Like, what are the actions, right? And you know, that's something that we talk about often here. Is that? Oh, don't worry, I pay Ken for lip service quite often. Yes, he does. <laughs> In dark back alleys <laughs> and adult bookstores. <laughs> God damn it! I just can't help myself anymore. You've corrupted. If you me go to forever. if you go to darkalley.locals.com. You'll find where he pays for for that stuff. Hey, baby, he gave I, for pay. I guarantee you that's a real thing. Go check. Go type it in right now. That's it's probably a real it. thing. <laughs> um, you definitely right about that, man. I don't. I, I, that's why I said I need people to go through and rewatch them if they'd like. Uh, you can go to youtubecom slash Ken's Counseling Couch for my YouTube. Uh, I have a upload I put up on Tuesday. I'm hoping to put something up today. I'm going to start doing shorts, YouTube shorts, because Nick said it helps expand the reach of your channel. So I'm going to try recording some of those to put up for people. Uh, I'm going to be putting up a video or stream on going through literally the ethical requirements in my field or, or my, my, specific pro, my specific profession, uh, word for word. And I'm going to be doing either a re-release stream or just re-releasing the video that has the uh firing video uh from my sophie part two and so people can see for a fact that i wasn't enjoying myself i wasn't getting off to that video that i was just reading the documents i wasn't pretending to be an expert or anything like that uh and and, because i'm pretty confident i did nothing wrong on that video as far as that goes it's not my fault people are uncomfortable and, and can't handle and it's not and it sucks to deal with trauma and to have that shit be uncomfortable, but it's not my fault. You came to my video. You don't have to be there. Yeah. Oh, you can support me. We at, know my GoFundMe at Ken support Ken.com or it's GoFundMe.com slash something slash support Ken. But if you just go to support Ken.com, it'll pull it right up. You can subscribe to me or follow support me on locals. It's a monthly rate for at least five dollars a month or more. Uh, it's support Ken.com slash locals. And you can also tip me on my stream elements at uh, supportken.com slash tip. Although if you are going to tip anything large, uh, can you send me a message on Discord or email? Because uh, as a precaution for safety reasons, they do hold them until they either get verified on stream or anything like that. So they check for fraudulent activity. I actually have like a grand worth of tips I have to verify oh, because wow. they've been put on hold. I've got, yeah, uh, but it's not hey, that you've hard got nine hundred dollars. YouTube is holding because that fucking letter don't show up in Drex's mailbox. Yeah, I think that there may have been some. There's some kind of error of some sort. I don't know what happened. Like, I mean, I look at their fucking driver's license. What more errors could they? You'd be make? amazed. These people find ways to do stupid stuff. Anyways, I emailed them back and it was like, "Yo, what the fuck? The channel got demonetized because you can't mail a fucking letter." And they're like. Wait for the letter to show up. It takes two to four weeks. Two to four weeks Drex. for what? These people are useless. It's, it's a fucking verification pin number that Google AdSense requires. Oh, I hate that thing. But yeah, ridiculous. Yeah, so because, because the channel's gotten, our channel's gotten so big, it's not, but big enough for them to care. Um, I can't transfer the money that you've all given in Super Chats for every one of our live streams. Until we do the fucking address verification. Yeah. Yeah, I, I will see. Like I said, I, I have mail sitting there and I've, I've asked my brother to look for it and he's like, I, I didn't see anything that said Google. So we'll, we'll figure out something. I, I don't know. I might, just, I might just go to Google's headquarters, man. Just go to Google HQ. 
Smash, uh, smash uh, Susan while you're there. Yeah, uh, YouTube campus. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not hard to get in touch with Susan. You just look at all the, the, the horrible looking uh, dweebs that they've got at the YouTube campus and be like this. Point me to your boss. Well, you should, shut up. And you just go ahead and just have a queen of spades. Uh, I'll just have a, a queen of spades pendant on what a cake. What happens if she's got a German Why shepherd? Why you be so mean, Drexel? Drexel, oh, yeah, what if she's got a German shepherd guarding her? Oh, uh, you know, man. it's like the final boss of YouTube headquarters, yeah, yeah. right? That's so oh, no, no, but, but I, I, I'm coming prepared. I, I got Dirty Dan coming with me, complete with the ball cream. <laughs> and uh, okay. if, if I, I see if I see any game. German shepherds at the YouTube campus, like because she's gonna be, it's gonna be a castle, and there's gonna be a moat, and I'm just gonna live it like <laughs> Dirty Dan, do your thing. <laughs> Wait, do German shepherds she respond me. to men uh, twerking? No, 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 no. All you need to be is white. No, no, no. So, so all you need to be is white. If you are a white male, there's nothing you can't get from a German shepherd. That's just a general rule of thumb. I want all white guys. That's why I've, I've always said there should be no white incels on planet Earth because you can get any, um, any, any black chick. It doesn't matter. I know what you're thinking. When are we getting our ghetto this and that. collab? I know. He's got the studio. So he's got the studio. He's getting that in order. So once, uh, once our man Duke has the studio up and running and all that good stuff, uh, he'll be ready because he's been crazy busy with that. I haven't even talked to him as much as I, I normally do because I know he's been busy and we've been busy. Fucking, um, you, you, Drex, you owe me three guests right now. You owe yeah. me Ty Beard, Mama Vic, and Ghetto Gaggers. I know, right? Yeah, I, I got to reach out to Mama Vic and see uh, when she wants to come on. We'll definitely, uh, we'll we'll definitely get, get that week, going. Episode 36. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll send her a message today. I, I sent her a message earlier this morning. Because, man, oh, man, people are asking, like, where's the Mama Vic recording? It's like, guys, I didn't make uh, she's, Vic recording. she's coming. So you guys are <laughs> doing the, uh, have you done Mama Vic yet or no? No, no, she, so she came on for technical oh, issues. I've done Mama Vic. Yeah. I know. I like that video. <laughs> she, Thank you for well, that. She, she came on for technical issues on, on navigating Discord, right? Yeah, it was supposed to be like two minutes. Hours. And next thing we know, it was two hours later. I was there. I was there. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Cause she she knew who I was, which I thought was kind of scary. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, they all know, kid. I don't know how, but I'll take it as a well, win. Because you were on our channel, she watches all our content. She watches Ricada. Say, so I need to be there for that. Whether I'm listening in or participating, I need to be there for the Mama Vic, because Mama yeah. Vic has like there's so many psychological like things about that Mama Vic. <laughs> Not like a bad thing, like just Mama Vic analyze it like an old school Midwest woman. Listen, <laughs> I can analyze anybody. You Why did you have to lean into that anal? You could just what? said analyze, but you said analyze. What are you talking about? <laughs> Stop being yeah, it, that's his version of cool whip. I don't know oh, why you have to be all mean about me analyzing people. Oh, so, goodness. Y'all are just. That just concerns me, Drexel, when you act like that. We've had too much fun on this show. Have Ken, we? glad to hear you're in better spirits. Absolutely. You sound, you sound like you're in better spirits anyways. I mean, I'm okay. I'm not the best. Uh, I have to try and make this as humorous as possible because otherwise it's too depressing. Like, I'm not even joking. That's like, my it, kind of approach to everything. Like I was everything. telling, I told a couple people and I told my friend, my one best friend this too. I was like, had this happened a couple of years ago, I wouldn't be alive right now because I couldn't have dealt with it. Like I would not have been able to deal with this much pressure. Like it's too much. Like me two years, two, me two, three, four years ago would not have been able to deal with this. It's that bad. Yeah, don't do anything stupid of, on us. And well, if you not. are having That's a crisis, why I went straight call... to my therapist. And if you um, are having a crisis, uh, be sure to call the National Pizza Hut hotline. Order yourself a bunch of uh, hot wings. But. On a dead serious note, though, if you are like feeling depressed or something, people do actually call the suicide hotline. Those people are there to actually, they want to talk to you, people. Like, if you're, Hillary if you're feeling like uh, shit, goes there to place orders all the time. Like, if you're feeling down and depressed, like, they people there want to talk to help. They want to be the people that can support you. Let them help you. They're, you're not taking away their time. You're not taking away the time of uh, someone else. Like they so, literally, their whole job is to, they volunteer or they get paid to help talk to you. You're not hurting so, them by calling. Sorry. Drex, I if, have to do that. If you call the suicide hotline and a German shepherd picks up, what are the chances that you're just going to like, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm doing it now. No, no, you, you're going to go one of two ways. Either you're going to go ahead and self eat 
right? Because you're like, oh God, this is this was no help. Or you're like, man, damn, listen to this thing, man. I, I have something to live for. Yeah. Jesus, because if that's what you got at the, at the hotline, <laughs> she's going home to someone. It can't really be that bad. It can't be me. that bad. I mean, I'm married, and my husband. Jesus, someone's married to this thing. <laughs> man, I, mean, I guess I got yeah. something to live for. They normally have a decent screening process for those people. Like, you're not going to run into just they. They they normally have people who are trained in crisis intervention who do those phone calls because sometimes you do get the. I'm literally holding a gun to my head phone calls, and you have to know how to deal with that. the joke, man. I don't matter. You know I have to be serious about this to some extent. It's literally part of my field. Like, I do have a small really? ethical obligation to, like, take it seriously. Like, I can joke, but, like, I do have to say, hey, if you are feeling like shit, I, it is my duty to, to a certain degree to say, hey, reach out for help. That's why people like me have jobs. And, or fucking send a message to Drexel. If you really feel like that, uh, if it's that bad, just DM me or Drexel. We'll talk. Or, 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 or I almost docked my damn name again. Or send a message to Ken uh, because Ken can either put you in contact with someone, find a therapist in your area, or I can just listen. I can't be your therapist. I'm not acting in a clinical capacity. But if you just need to get shit off your chest, that's what I'm here for. My I'm your DMs friend. Have been, that's it. My DMs have been blowing up, but I have been trying to get back to people. I have been trying to juggle a lot in the last week. I have been very, very busy. Um, yes, I have been, I you know, doing stuff like doing my fair share of shit posting and stuff, but that's part of the help keep myself sane. Like, well, it's I have been go trying. Me. Uh, it sounds like you've got some good support in the GoFundMe, yes, so hopefully I, that I, takes I, a lot of pressure off for the. I'm overwhelmed weeks. in a positive way by how many people are supporting me. I couldn't yeah, believe. Go ahead, uh, do your do your thank you. Like, I cannot believe how many people, like, I, like it's been to the point, like, I've cry, I've almost cried several times just to, at the amount of people who have, like, sent me messages of support or just reading my own chat or Nick's chat or we're here for you, we're here to back you, you know, it's bullshit what happened to you. It's even kind of just as overpowering, if not more, watching the people who are flipping sides from that side to see them go hey it's really fucked up i thought we were doing you know the right thing i got caught up in it i recognized what i was doing was wrong like if anything comes from it this you know i hope that that's a, a good thing like i hope that there's a way to make this a net positive and i've used that in counseling before as i tell people you know i take the worst thing that's happened to you and i can make it a positive it's all in how you frame it it's all in what you do with it you know so i'm trying to make this positive that's why, you know, when I put that email out there that hopefully might get shared of, hey, just own up to it. Own up to what you did is wrong and try to undo it if you care about the damage you did. Because A, if you care, you'll try to fix it somehow, I would think. Or B, if you're like, that's stupid or dumb, that just looks bad on you as a person, right? Like, yeah, you can say what I did was harmful, but is it really as harmful as two dozen plus people's lives being permanently impacted because of uh, you making a phone call or an email to get me fired with lies. Like who's, whose impact is more great. Like, do you really, can you personally like live with that thought of I, I was so petty or I, I, I was so caught up in it that I can't admit the fault. Like, yes, they can, can you, because in their delusional mind, it was all justified. But those people with it, if they say that out loud, it looks bad. Like if they yeah, say, say that it to out yourself loud. right now, say it in your mind. Everything I did was correct and it handled the, the best but way think, possible. But think about it this way, though. And there's a reason why I did that is because the pe maybe not the people who specifically did it, but the people in that community, in that group will see that reaction and go, they're not willing to to address two dozen, 25 plus people being hurt. They don't care. Oh, like how do you No, That's how women think. It's a hive mind. No, there are people who have been flipping because of shit like that. They have been coming this way and supporting me and helping. They've been giving me critical information, critical screenshots. Like they are putting, <laughs> some people have been putting shit on the line. I've got a couple really good sources that are really out there. I've gotten access to information that's uh, insightful uh, from the case perspective. Hey, uh, uh, just, Drex, just, can we catfish these women with like a Castro Supreme photo? Yeah. Well, I actually have someone who uh, who dealt with Castro, so I can just be like, yo, 
We need the real Castro Supreme. Um, he can go over there and do, <laughs> I mean, I'm do what he you, does. All these Karens, all these Karens would change their tune very hurt. In, in all they need is the D, man. Down. Yeah, yeah, look, look, and that's something that we didn't touch on with the psychology of Karens. They just crave uh, attention, validation, and D. That, and you can actually solve all the it's other problems. Control more than D. anything. It's not wait, necessarily wait, attention. Yeah. Well, where's the thing? They, they, they try to control the, the social environment, right? That's their goal, right? That, that's why when, when people are having, do you ever notice where, when Karen show up? They show up when someone's saying something they don't like, like they're trying to, they're trying to cancel Kevin Samuels for calling out German Shepherd's uh, bad behavior, or when they see people having fun, right? If they see a group of people, especially dudes, having what they quote as too much fun, they have to interject right get that attention and validation look at me look how strong i am by calling and then that's when they run to daddy government or big daddy tech censorship it is the same game over and over but the betas are going to allow it because that's what they do because you know right. women are, are gods we're now two and a quarter hours in oh so yeah yeah, yeah. Let's well, we shut it down up. go ahead also one one of the recorders just like uh failed on us but the backup <clears throat> one's still going nice so Let's let's get this all wrapped up before uh, that one fails too. Uh, thanks for listening, everyone. Uh, you know where to find us. You know how to support us. Make sure you support Ken Jennings. I know we'll, uh, Drex and I will be kicking some money in too. Um, yeah. Thank you, guys. You're welcome, Ken. And hang in there, buddy. Until next week, everyone. Stay frosty. Peace. Peace. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>